lot of instances. So if you live somewhere where, for example, snows, uh, that can be an issue. Uh, we became interested in the lower end of its temperature range because numerous studies have already shown that the epinephrine compound will remain stable at low temperatures. Um, this is well documented and was actually uh, compiled in a systematic review done by Parrish et al. in 2016. And additionally, in one prior study, there were 20, uh, 20 EpiPen devices that were frozen and thawed and still fired successfully, which indicated that um, perhaps uh, low temperatures are not as detrimental as was previously thought. So our objective was to determine the effects of freezing temperatures on EpiPen device function and integrity, and more specifically, determine whether 24 hours of freezing and thawing would uh, change the volume of epinephrine solution fired by the device. Our secondary aim was to determine whether freezing would um, damage the internal workings of the device in such a way that you wouldn't want to use it. So for example, if the vial containing the epinephrine were cracked, that would not be a device you'd want to use. Our study included 104 pairs of post-consumer uh, expired epinephrine auto-injectors. 52 were EpiPens and 52 were EpiPen Juniors. And uh, importantly, within each pair, they shared the same lot number, expiration date, and consumer. The logic was that because within each pair all these uh, variables were, were shared, any difference in solution fired could be accounted for by the freezing event. Uh, so on that note, we then took one device from each pair and stored it at uh, negative 25 degrees Celsius for 24 hours, which is well outside of the recommended range, and then thought it while we kept the other within the recommended temperature range. We then fired each device into marbleized beef, which we used to simulate human muscle tissue, and uh, recorded the pre-injection and post-injection masses of both the beef and the, uh, and the, inject and the device. Um, the thinking was that the loss in mass of the device should equal the gain in mass of the beef, and both should indicate the amount of solution fired. Um, so our, our primary outcome was the increase in mass of the beef and the difference in increase in mass between the frozen and control groups. And we compared these groups using one-sided tests, first unadjusted t-tests and then later tests that adjusted for device dose and expiration date in a linear model. Our secondary outcome was the decrease in mass of the device, uh, which, we, uh, which should give us the same result, the amount of that. Um, we define these outcomes as equivalent if the average difference in mass for frozen devices was within 10% of the difference for unfrozen devices, and we had sufficient power to conclude equivalence for both outcomes. Moving on to our results really quickly, we did conclude equivalence for both outcomes, the uh, increase in meat mass and the decrease in device mass between um, the, uh, the control and frozen groups, indicating that uh, the frozen thawed devices had fired a similar uh, mass of epinephrine solution compared to the control devices. And this testing continued to show equivalence for both frozen thawed devices and control devices um, after, we, uh, after we controlled for device dose and expiration date. And you can actually see this here, just to focus on uh, one, one pair of columns here. This is the mass gained by the meat and frozen control groups just for the EpiPen juniors. And you can see that the frozen in light uh, blue and the control in dark blue differ by less than uh, a hundredth of a gram. So our, our secondary aim was a little harder to execute because it required opening the devices once they've been fired. And it turns out that once the spring is expanded inside the device, there's a lot of pressure on the inside, which caused, um, when you open them, it causes the back to kind of explode off. And it, it turned out that that opening, the violence of it, was actually cracking the vials in both the controlled and frozen groups. So to remedy that, we went back and froze an additional 104 devices, which were then opened um, without being fired. And upon doing that, we found no cracked vials or other damage. Um, and also the, the seal remained intact. Um, so before concluding, a couple caveats. First, this uh, the study only focused on EpiPen, so this result wouldn't apply to other types of epinephrine auto injectors. And also, this the study only looked at the effects of one freezing event as opposed to multiple freezing events. But within those constraints, we did find that freezing for 24 hours did not impair EpiPen or EpiPen Junior device function once they were thawed. The inner workings of the devices had remained intact, and so while freezing is not recommended, um, an EpiPen accidentally left in freezing temperatures for a short period of time 
is uh, at very at low risk for malfunction. Thank you.